Six months ago, Germany started the EU Council presidency in the middle of the COVID-19 crisis with a cultural program called No Borders in Music, because there are no borders in music with cooperation worldwide. And today, six months later, we again emphasize music, but this time the digitalization in music. Which new chances does it give to musicians to earn a living? Which new chances for property rights for artists? These are the things discussed today uh, and also tomorrow in two workshops. Please be part of it. It's a learning experience for all of us in this new digital world. Dan Tepfer, pianist from New York, will play music but also visualize music with his program Natural Machines. So Natural Machines is a project where I've written computer algorithms that respond in real time to what I'm improvising at the piano. And they respond uh, both musically by actually playing, physically playing the keys of the piano in response to what I play, and they also respond visually because uh, I've written a separate set of programs that generates a visual representation of the music as it's happening. Have you increased your amount of dream, for example, mm -hmm. and health effects on this? Do you see colors in a different way or do you see rhythm in another way because you have sort of stretched your capacity on the amygdala system? That's a wonderful question. I, I think I don't have a good answer to that except to say that in some of the algorithms, um, the visuals still, even though I've performed with them many times, they still actually have the power to move me emotionally. Mm -hmm. And as a result, when I'm playing, when I'm improvising, I like to look at them and um, I find myself, because I'm improvising, right? I find myself not only reaching for sounds that move me, but also to try to create images that move me. And, and as a result, the images actually are part of the improvisational process. They're not just a result. Mm -hmm. You know, the March 16th or something like that, the, the pandemic hit uh, where I live in Brooklyn and uh, all our gigs were, canceled, were, were uh, gradually canceled. And a big question that came up for, for myself and for many of my fellow improvisers is, uh, when are we going to be able to play again with uh, another human being? Because this is very important to our, our happiness, <laughs> not to mention our income. And so I looked up this uh, approach called Jack Trip, and I started using it. And uh, I set it up with a friend of mine, and, and at that point it was mid-April, and we played together over the internet, and, and we literally like had tears streaming down our faces because we hadn't played with another human being in like six weeks at that point. This is really what I've discovered in the pandemic, is that I think what's essential is to is to make things feel live. Really make people understand that this is not like watching a YouTube video, a pre-recorded YouTube video. It's like we are all here together, even though we're physically separate. Ruger Noreen, director of Studio Acousticum, the concert hall in Piteå in the very north of Sweden, will present digitalized concerts. And Björn Ulveus, president of CSAC, and also known from ABBA, of course, will uh, speak to us about um, how to protect creators' rights, especially in these difficult times. It's even a human right, you know, to, to share what, uh, w what we can produce in the community uh, to as many as possible. Uh, and of course it makes it harder if, if they are spread out on a huge region like this. So the digital technique has been like a blessing for us. At the moment we are involved or running two uh, projects within digital music. Uh, the first one is about to see how we can make uh, our artists make money on the internet on our broadcasted uh, concerts and so on. Uh, we try to see if we can, in a way, change the economy 
model for uh, concerts uh, where several parts are involved, uh, the concert hall, the management, the artist, and finally the audience, uh, and uh, see how it will go in the new digital world. Artists used to be able to um, make about 70% of their income on, on live gigs, and musicians 100% almost. Uh, so all of a sudden that is taken away from them. It's a glaring fact now that the streaming economy is the song economy is not enough to sustain yourself on. And there's a big debate going on right now. I, I had an idea that I would, I, I, I would uh, team up with some very famous artist in, in a country, like, like in Germany. I would find someone uh, uh, really established and well-known and then I'll find someone um, young and, and new. And we, the three of us, would go to the culture minister or, or whoever is relevant in Germany and talk to them about, you know, songwriting, about artists, what, 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 what our problems are, and to straighten this out about the directive which is so hopeful for artists and musicians and, and songwriters. But there, there, there is a clear danger that the big lobbies of big tech are, are making inroads in, 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 into what the politicians think. And, and we have to change that. We have to work really hard. And I'm prepared to do that as president of CSAC. And every week there is a demonstration outside the parliament uh, with um, musicians, with actors uh, of any kind, and they perform something, and they maybe they hold a speech or they get interviewed about the situation because we're in a very bad situation. And that's what I did yesterday. And um, I almost froze my butt off, but it was still a lot of fun. <laughs> so let's uh, work together that there will be performances soon again big audiences, and maybe some new inventions which add on. Uh, and, of course, a safe basis for income for artists, in particular those who are like self-employed uh, and take all the risk at these times. And we should never forget how much we owe to them because music is our life too. And uh, it brings us to tears, which means this is life. Thank you so much for coming.